So every month we bring you a roundup of all the sectarian violence that's been going on in Iraq and every month the death toll is shockingly high. But this month we thought we'd start with something a little bit different. And that starting point is the continuing pursuit of profit from the war with Iraq that we started. There was a weapons conference in Baghdad at the start of March, the third since 2012. There were 53 foreign companies there to sell guns and other weapons to help the Iraqi armed forces rebuild stability in their country. Unsurprisingly, there were representatives from the UK and the US, the two countries leading the war charge. So our governments essentially created this instability before allowing corporations to go in and exploit it. In the same way that there was a run on Iraqi oil in the immediate aftermath of the invasion, weapons companies are now seeking to exploit the situation our governments helped to create. And the situation that's being created in Iraq is one of extreme instability. On March the 8th, the car bomb went off near a market in northern Baghdad. It killed four people and injured 12 civilians. It detonated in the mainly Shia area of al qahera and damaged a few shops and vehicles. It, like most of the bombings, was blamed on the Islamic State of Iraq and al-Sham, a group whose profile and strength has grown since the outbreak of war in neighboring Syria. And on the same day in Baghdad, there were protests against the proposed Jafari law. The law would permit the marriage of nine-year-old girls and automatically give custody to fathers. The protests were timed to coincide with International Women's Day and they were protesting about the text of the legislation, which describes girls as reaching puberty at nine and making them fit for marriage. It also makes the father sole guardian of his children, as well as allowing a husband to insist on sexual intercourse with his wife whenever he wants. It's been condemned around the world and by Iraqis because it turns women into sexual tools for men and worsens the already poor status of women in general in Iraq. On March the 15th, three car bombs in Baghdad killed at least 15 people in mainly Shia areas. The three attacks happened in Amin, al qahira and Al-Amil. There was another attack on the same day in the city of Tikrit in Salahuddin province, north of Baghdad. At least 30 people were wounded there. And then on March the 20th, a suicide bomber killed at least 14 people and wounded another 41 in Al Washash in West Baghdad. The elections in Iraq are fast approaching and violence is expected to increase. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has launched an offensive against ISIS in the west of the country, in Ambar province. But that doesn't seem to have stemmed the flow of blood at all. We selected just a few of the attacks, but they happen every single day, whether by suicide bomb, car bomb or gunfights. The level of sectarian violence at the moment is shocking. The Iraq Body Count's initial estimate for the number of people killed in Iraq in sectarian violence in March alone is 1,009. That brings the total for 2014 to more than 3,000. And if it carries on at this rate, it could be the bloodiest year since the end of the invasion.